In this lecture, we are going to continue on top of the previous lecture and show you how you can use JavaScript indirectly in your QML files. Let's go to Qt Creator and do that. To show you how you can use JS indirectly, we're going to add a new JavaScript file. Click on the QRC file here, right click, add the new, choose Qt and uh, choose JavaScript file. We're going to call this utilities2. Hit next and finish. In this utilities2 file, we want to define a new function that is called add, and it is going to add two numbers. We're going to return a plus b and save the file. So what we want to do is to import utilities2 inside utilities1 so that we can use it. The way you do that, it basically is like what we did in main QML file, but we put a dot in front of our import. So we're going to say import utilities2.js2, like this. If we define another function here, for example, call it combine edges, and it's going to take edge one and edge two, and it's going to return utilities to add these two edges, okay? Edge one and edge two. And we want to flag here that we are indirectly calling add method from utilities two. We can now call this function from main QML file. Let's go there, comment this out, what we did in the previous lecture. And we can say console log our ages combined yield. Okay, we concatenate that here, say utilities one, combine edges, and say, for example, 33 and 17. If we run this application and click on the rectangle here, you see that we are indirectly calling add from utilities here. This is the code coming from here. You see that this method is being called and the result is what we expected. If we go back into utilities two and uh, put a console log message to prove things and say method from utilities to called. Let's run again. Click here and you see that Okay, our changes are not being picked up. You don't see the message here. Let's go back to the QML file, add a space, and run again. Click here. And you see that our message is being shown. Sometimes Qt Creator doesn't pick the changes from the external files that you use. So if you don't see the expected result, try coming back to the QML file, add a space or something, and then run again you're probably going to see your changes. Okay, this is how you can import the JavaScript file inside another JavaScript file. And when you import this, you can only use these methods from this file. This method is not available from the main QML file. So for example, if we come in the main QML file and try to call add directly like this and run the application, see that add should be imported by importing utilities too, but uh, we cannot use it directly in main QML. It is only available in the scope of utilities one because we use this import here. To prove our case, we're going to run and it's going to show an error showing that the add method is not recognized. Let's run the application. Click here and you see type error property add of object is not a function. It is not being recognized. 
you cannot use this function here. You have to use it in the scope of this utilities one JS file. So if you want to import another JavaScript file and use it as if it was defined in here, there is another kind of import that you can do. And that's what we're going to see. So we are going to add another utilities file, add a new Qt JavaScript file. It's going to be utilities three. And inside we are going to define a function, call it substract. It's going to take A and B as parameters, and it's going to return A minus B. This is what we want. To import this function in uh, utilities one and make it available here so that we can use it directly like we used greeting, there is another kind of import that you can do. What you can do is call cute import and pass in the name of the file that you want to import. So you're going to use utilities 3.js. And from now on, it is like you took this function here and defined it right here. You, got, you can call it here or you can call it in the QML file. To prove our case, we're going to go back to the QML file and say console log the difference of 50 and uh, 33, we are going to call this method from the scope of utilities one. So we are going to use utilities one here, subtract. It's not available in autocomplete, but it's going to work. Okay, 50 and 33. Let's run the application, fingers crossed. Okay, what is wrong here? Oh, we said the cute import, we should have said cute include. Sorry for that, here you say include. Run again. And if you click here, it's going to say the difference is uh, 17. We are able to call a method that is defined in utilities three from the scope of utilities one. Okay, these are two different ways you can uh, indirectly import JavaScript in your QML. One is to use this import with a dot to make the code available under a different namespace. And to call that code, you're going to have to use this namespace here. And we have used that here. Another way is to import a JavaScript file and make it available directly in the scope so that you can call it in the scope of the file where you define it. We have used that here in the main QML file where we called a function in utilities three as if it was in utilities one. And you do that by using this cute include thing here and you pass in the file that you want to import. And this closes our journey of visiting ways you can use JavaScript in your QML file. In the next chapter, we're going to start and look at how you can position different elements in your QML, and we're going to shed some light on row and column components that we've been using without having explained them in detail. I'll see you in the next chapter.